how are we supposed to memorize all that? Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Matt and I'm a junior doctor working in London. I recently took the MRCP part one, a medical exam passed by 40% of doctors worldwide. And despite the technical difficulties, managed to get a scaled score of 732, which according to the statistics is in the top 10% worldwide. In this video, I'll be talking about how I prepared and revised for the exam and the tools and resources that I use. So hopefully it will be useful for some of you guys looking to take it as well. And this is going to be a fairly long video because I'm trying to share all my insight with you guys. So feel free to jump to various sections that you think will be helpful. I'll link the timestamps in the description below. Just to give you guys an idea of how much revision I needed, I studied for about three months, on average two to four hours a day. I did around 4,500 questions, which comprised of 3,500 past med questions, a thousand mock paper questions, and a little bit extra just revising the ones I got wrong. And I also used flashcards in addition to several other resources, which I'll go through in a bit. It is a long grind, but if you go in with the plan and you have some discipline, it's definitely, definitely manageable. So let's get into how I prepared for this exam. I'm going to break it down into three sections. First of all is the planning, second of all the study process, and third of all I'm going to talk about the highest yield tips that helped me the most in my revision. Doing well on an exam is 90% about the mindset and 10% about the revision itself. Revision is a long process and it was important that I had the motivation to persevere, hold myself accountable for it in the highs and the lows. Before I even considered taking the exam, I asked myself, what was my motivation for passing this exam? Why did I want to take it? And what was I willing to sacrifice in order to achieve my goal? What would it mean to pass? And what would it mean to fail? I reviewed these questions several times until I was happy with my answer to succeed. The next thing I did was research, which I think is as important as the study process itself. Even before I decided to take the exam, I comprehensively researched it to make sure I understood the task that I was getting into. The key sources and resources that I obtained my information from included YouTube, the official websites, MRCP official reports, various forums like student forum and Reddit, and also just speaking to my colleagues and seniors. My objective in doing due diligence was to figure out what exactly the exam entailed, what the expectations and objectives were of revision itself, how difficult it was, and to ascertain the most time efficient and effective study method possible to maximize my chances of passing. Information that I specifically looked out for, which I can now share with you guys, is that it is a pass-fail exam with a 30% pass rate. It's multiple choice and is taken by doctors worldwide at the same time. The exam itself consists of two papers, three hours each consisting of 100 questions per paper and consists of 17 medical specialties of varying allocations of numbers of questions according to the significance of the specialty, which was mostly above a level medical school finals and tested both preclinical and clinical aspects. And there is a lot of content Basically anything within those specialty is fair game, but they do tend to follow a similar theme every year. Candidates tended to do better if they attempted the exam right after medical school in the next few years. People reported that study periods ranged from anywhere between two months to four months, and almost everyone I spoke to used the question bank as their main source of revision, with the range of questions done ranging anywhere between 3,500 to 10,000 questions. Finally, the average raw percentage, which is the actual percentage of marks that you need to get in the exam to pass, was usually around 60% and we calculated that from previous papers and statistics. Equally as important as researching the paper is to find out your strong and weak points so you can determine how much time you need to spend on each specialty and what to work on in particular for yourself. I identified the weak specialties that I needed to spend a bit more time on, so hematology and rheumatology, and also went through the subsections of each specialty to determine how much work I would need to do for each one. Like I said, there is so much information everywhere waiting for you to assimilate, and honestly, knowledge is power. I was working full-time while maintaining my other commitments, so it was most important that I had a time-efficient and effective structure towards my learning. Therefore, remember that planning is essential. The two things that I planned out are, number one, the study method, and number two, my study schedule. My study strategy was based off the five key principles of learning, from exposure, understanding, learning, active recall, and finally, application. In my opinion, how you facilitate your learning is equally as important as the content that you are learning. Understanding the flow of information has been key in all my study plans and got me through medical school. And what I mean is the way you learn, taking a fact, breaking it down into digestible and understandable bits and concepts, learning it, repeating it so you can consolidate it in your head, and finally applying and utilizing this information to instill it in your memory. Having a strategy like this lets you learn maximal content 
in the least amount of time in the most effective way. And I won't talk too much about this because this is an MRCP video, but I would really encourage all of you to think about the way you learn because I know that once I started looking at it, it really affected the way I revised and studied. I'm super excited to be doing another video about this shortly after this one, so definitely press the subscribe button down below to see when it comes out. The second thing I planned was making a schedule to make sure that I was consistent, accountable for my information and making good progress. I used Google Sheets, which is free and essentially made a template with the specialties, the number of questions and the dates that I had revised and was planning to revise them again. Having a look at the specialty breakdown, I roughly allocated the number of days to the specialties and the specialties with more questions like cardiology, respiratory medicine, endocrinology, I would allocate a bit more time to roughly six or seven days and specialties with less number of questions like ophthalmology and psychiatry, I would allocate less time, two to three days. I then created sub specialty documents within the same Google Sheet to make sure that I was aware of what subsections there were. For example, in cardiology, there's heart attacks, there's valvular disease, there's cardiomyopathies, which allowed me to track my progress, revision, and confidence in each of those subsections as I went along. Having a central document of organization just made my revision process so much smoother and so much easier to track. So I would really encourage anyone in my position to do something similar. Closer to the exam, when I was just tying up a few loose ends, I planned my schedule a bit more meticulously, which means I was aware of what I was doing every morning, every afternoon and every evening and keeping myself accountable for that. Finally, because I was working full time, I made changes to my routine to make sure that despite my 12 hour shifts, I would be able to work in the morning and evening and this meant waking up a few hours earlier and just changing a few things throughout the day. You can find out more about that in my other video, which I'll link in the description down below. Right, with all that time planning, we need to actually do some revision now. Let's talk about the resources I used. I used the MRCP part one past test book, past medicine question bank, flashcards I created myself on Anki. I used good notes on an iPad to make my notes and mind maps. Mock papers from various resources, including on examination, past test, and the official MRCP website. And finally, good old pen and paper. As an overview, my revision plan consisted of working through each individual specialty one at a time, finishing everything to do with that specialty, and then moving on to the next one while still periodically reviewing the notes and the flashcards. To give you guys an example of what I mean by that, I'm going to go through cardiology as an example and talk about the resources I used, why I used them, and how I used them. The first thing I did when I started any specialty was to grab the past test book, and this book was great because it had very clear and concise explanations and laid everything out in a very organized fashion, making it easy to understand what was within that specialty. It really helped me organize and categorize my thoughts and identify weak points or various things that I had never even heard of. It is a well-written and concise book and I knew with confidence that everything inside was high yield and relevant to the exam, which allowed me to study with confidence. However, bear in mind that reading is a very limited form of learning, so I really only used it for material exposure. Was it useful? Absolutely. Was it essential? Probably not. You could maybe look for the same amount of information online or through question bank knowledge bases. However, the information was organized, condensed and high yield and it was definitely an asset to my revision process. Next, the question bank is by far the most valuable resource that you will do in MRCP part one revision, no doubt. If you are short on time, do question banks. If you're not short on time, do question banks. There are quite a few good question banks out there for part one. BMJ on examination, past test, past medicine, the Royal College. I can tell you a million reasons why question banks are so important for revision, but the key ones are that A, everything within the question bank is so relevant to the exam, and it also encompasses previous questions from the recent exams. B, they provide detailed explanations when they finish the question and also have knowledge bases of information to learn from. C, they have progress trackers to guide your revision and tell you how you're doing and how much you have left to do. D, they signpost you to good resources when the questions themselves aren't enough, which saves you so much time. And E, there are so many questions, usually around 3,000 to 4,000 questions per question bank, which means tons of repeated testing and learning and application. So you'll be familiar with the content by the end of it. So essentially it covers every single stage of learning from exposure to learning and understanding to constant repetition of the questions and application. And you can also learn and remember through recall and recognition, which are two separate pathways of learning. So double the benefit. I personally chose past medicine because it has the biggest and best knowledge base, which I personally found the most valuable. I was using it as my main resource and I found the explanations of everything from drugs to disease to investigations to random facts just super helpful and detailed and also very concise and everything you need to know for the exam another plus is that they have access to resources such as osmosis which do amazing videos for the value that past medicine charges the value is immense and i would 100 recommend for anyone taking the exam to do this question bank as a main source of revision 
I fitted this into my revision plan by finishing all the questions in that one specialty that I was doing. I read up on things I didn't know in various conditions as I went along, made general notes of things that I wanted to revise further by copying from online resources or the past medicine texts. And I also made some clearer and more concise notes on the iPad on good notes, just for my own reference. Making your own notes has two main benefits. First of all, while you're making the notes themselves, you learn to understand them, you're really thinking about it in your head. And when you're writing the notes down, you're trying to understand it and process it into a more tangible form. The second benefit obviously of making notes is that you have a resource to revise later that's clear, concise, and obviously very relevant to your paper. I also love making notes on the iPad because you can use all sorts of color and highlights to make it more interesting. So, you know, small wins while revising. Moving on, I created flashcards on Anki for facts that I needed to memorize. I made mind maps on GoodNotes on my iPad to try and join concepts together that I was unfamiliar with. I personally love mind maps because they are scientifically proven to be really effective because they mimic a process called procedural learning. So I think it's a great study tool and you might find it effective as well, especially if you're a visual learner. All these resources essentially allowed me to extract unfamiliar information into a more condensed form that I could revise, as well as consolidate information that I was more familiar with. After I'd finished all those resources in that specialty, I would review them periodically, usually around five to 10 days, and then another 10 days, and then again before the exam. I also reviewed my flashcards with Anki, which is an amazing program that has pre-programmed intervals for effective retention. And I would continue on these flashcards as I moved on to the next specialty. I finally finished all 17 specialties after months and my final past medicine mark was about 64.5%. I probably had around two to three weeks left at this point. So it was time to tie up some loose knots, do some further revision and really consolidate my information. The three main things that I did at this point was number one, revising my old condensed notes. Number two, doing mock papers from BMJ on examination, past tests, and also the official MRCP papers. And number three, doing flashcards through Anki. I was fairly meticulous with my planning and my schedule to make sure that I held myself accountable for things and I was tracking my progress quite well. I was waking up at 5 to 6 a.m. and doing a few hours of work before work and after work I would sit down and do some flashcards in the evening. In total, I did 11 mocks and about 2,327 flashcards and went into the exam feeling fairly confident that I would pass. Luckily, I did despite some technical difficulties and it turned out okay, so I'm really happy about that. So I thought I'd just summarize the resources that I thought were the highest yield and had the biggest impact on my revision. And this might be relevant if you are someone who's short on time for revision or just wants to focus on the most relevant materials. The first thing is question banks. I think this goes without saying, and I've already commented on this quite extensively. This is the single most important resource that you'll have for the exam for good reason. I'm 100% pushing for this and I would really advise going for past medicine for the knowledge banks, just so you can read up on whatever that you get wrong or don't understand. The second thing that I think was actually the most high yield in terms of effort to what you got out of it were mnemonics. You're going to encounter many a time while revising where you are going to sit back in disbelief and say, how are we supposed to memorize all that? That happened to me so many times. The reality is you just need to learn a bunch of facts for the exam from drugs that cause prolonged QT intervals to causing gynecomastia to causes of lung fibrosis. And one thing that made my life a whole lot easier for this are mnemonics. That is a word or a term representation of a series of letters that usually encompass key information and just make it so much easier to remember. For example, the condition sarcoidosis can be remembered through a mnemonic called sarcoidosis, which for every letter has individual facts that you would probably have so much trouble linking together, but with this one word just makes it so much easier to put together. I think I had about 20 to 30 mnemonics by the end of my revision period, which I just had at the back of my head. And it was actually so essential for my studying just to be able to use those to remember those random bits of information. However, just do bear in mind that when you're learning mnemonics, you're essentially just doing the memorization. So make sure that you understand the things that you're learning before you memorize them. Third thing are flashcards and they are a timeless addition to any medical school revision session, to be honest. Flashcards are a great way to learn because they let you revise through effective methods of space repetition, recall, and application. I used Anki, which is a free cross-platform program. You can use it on your phone, tablet, and laptop. And essentially it has pre-programmed intervals for effective retention. This was super useful, especially towards the end of my revision when I was doing basically an hour each night just brushing up on key concepts that I wanted to memorize. The only thing is that you need to bear in mind when creating that flashcard that you're doing it in a clear and concise manner that's understandable immediately as you see the question and you're testing facts that you do actually want to memorize. There's all sorts of magic to optimizing Anki, but I'm not going to go through it in this video. But let me know in the comments below if that would be something that you'd be interested in seeing. 
Finally, I'm just going to add this here because it was the only thing that kept me sane, especially towards the end, but take revision breaks. Not gonna lie, the last month was a real struggle for me motivation-wise. I was definitely burning out. If I hadn't taken more breaks, set time aside to see my friends, treat myself to good food, I genuinely don't think that I would have been able to continue with my revision. Obviously, studying is important, but what's more important than any of that is your mental health and well-being. If you're not taking care of yourself, how are you supposed to study? Go get that food, go see your friends. Don't be afraid to take that evening off just to spend some time for yourself. So to summarize the takeaway points from my video, a strong mindset is the first step to success. Due diligence is your biggest advantage. Know what your task is at hand. Plan your study schedule for maximum time efficiency and effectiveness. Consistency and accountability are key. Question banks are your number one resource and use tools to support the way that you learn. So guys, that is it. And wow, this has been a long video and I've just tried to share everything, but I hope that it has been useful for you guys. There's no going around it. This is just a massive exam with so much content to revise and you do just need to sit down, hit the books and you will do just fine. Let me know down in the comment section below if you have any specific questions and whether you found this useful at all. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this and want to see more on medicine, productivity and just my life as a doctor, press the subscribe button down below to see more. But for now, that's it, and I will see you guys in the next video.